Hello everyone, it's Wilson here. Let's talk about this integral here. This integral, we have a square root of x squared plus 25, and this is actually a, uh, a, a function, right? That requires you to use tricks up, because as you can see here, this square root here, we can integrate that directly unless the inside is a linear function, but we do not really have a linear function in here. We have a quadratic expression in there, and there is nothing on the outside that will allow us to use a simple u sub to do it. Okay, so this is actually a tricks up problem because you can see that that's in the form of a, um, of a x squared plus a constant. Right, so in this case, we can actually try to use tricks up. And how do we use tricks up? Let's just recall something first. Okay, so the thing that I'm going to recall right here is the uh, Pythagorean identity, the tangent and the secant version of that. And so the reason for why I'm recalling that one is really because of the um, the form of the quadratic that we have inside the square root. That actually tells us that we actually need to recall the one that that's similar to this one. And then you may say, what did, what, uh, how do we know that, right? So if you look at this version here, regarding the, uh, the, the, the Pythagorean identity for, the, <clears throat> um, for tangent and secant, and then you can see that that's tangent squared data right here, and then plus one, and it's equal to secant squared data. Now, do you see what's going on here? If you look at this left side right here of this equation, you can see that there is something square right here and then plus and then some constant, right? If we are treating data as a variable. So that that actually it's similar to this in some way. And then of course you may say that that's 25 right here, but then the constant is one right here. So they're not even the same. But what we can do is that we can multiply both sides of the equation by 25. Then we are actually getting so we're actually getting 25, right? We multiply everything by 25. So we get 25 tangent square data plus, now the one times 25, we are going to be getting 25. And then that's equal to 25 also, right? 25 also. And do you see what's going on here? Um, there is a there is now the 25 plus 25 plus 25 and then that's x square and then now we can claim that okay so this thing right here we are going to call it x square okay so let's do that so we can call that x square and by calling this expression right here x square it will actually tell us what that trick substitution is so see that once you start coming up with this expression right here you do not really need to force yourself to memorize uh which one that you need to use for the trick up whether it's the sine whether it's a tangent whether it's a, uh, the secant it doesn't really um <clears throat> it doesn't really require you to memorize that by just looking at this expression even though it's not hard to memorize but I would, I'm showing you a way so that you do not need to memorize that. All you need to know is to know that uh, this identity here. And <clears throat> assuming that you're taking this calculus class, right? You should already know the identity. So that I think that would be a lot easier. You just use whatever that you already know so that you can come up with something that's new, right? So that's um, less amount of effort that you will need to know. Okay, so we have the x squared here plus 25. So this expression looks exactly like the stuff inside the square root. Okay, so now if x squared is equal to 25 times tangent squared data, then all we need to do is to say that, so let's continue with the um, the tricks up stuff right here. So this is really just saying that x is equal to so if x squared is equal to 25 tangent squared data, then we can actually say that x is equal to five and then tangent data, okay? And then um, because when we do the trick stuff, we also need to replace the dx. So we are going to take the derivative of the x with respect to data. So we are going to be getting dx is equal to five secant squared data, d data. Okay, and then there is some other information that we should be putting down also because um, we are also going to require that tangent is going to be a one-to-one -one function because we're actually doing a reverse substitution here. So 
what we need is that we need to restrict the domain for the uh, the tangent function because we require the function to be one to one. So in this case, we actually need to restrict data to be between legacy pi over two and pi over two, and we're not including the pi over two and the legacy pi over two because tangent is um, is undefined at those two values. Okay. So now it would actually also be a good idea to draw the triangle. Um, you can wait until later to draw it, but I'm just going to draw it right now because we're, we can actually just get all the preparation out of the way. And then when we actually get to that step, then we don't need to do too much. Okay, so in this case, um, we are just going to assume that the angle is this one, right? The shaded angle is this one. So... So looking at this angle, this angle actually represents the angle, uh, the reference angle for data. So in this case, what happens? What happened is that we are going to, um, so as you can see here, uh, x is equal to five times tangent data, right? So from there, we actually get a new version of that, which is that we can write tangent data. So we should also isolate the tangent. So tangent data is going to be equal to what? If we are isolating the tangent data, then we need to do x divided by 5. Right? So as you can see here, so it's a lot of um, tiny things that we need to put down right here. But it's OK, right? So this one is really just all basic algebra right here, except that we got to take the derivative. But that's still really simple. OK, so based on this tangent data equals x over 5, we can actually start uh, putting down the information for this right triangle here. And so tangent data is equal to x over 5. So the x is going to be the opposite, right? The opposite of this angle. So that's x. And then the adjacent is 5. And so you can see that the hypotenuse based on the Pythagorean identity it's going to be x squared plus 25. Okay, so that's what we have right here. Now, everything is ready. We can actually, we can actually do start doing the substitution. Okay, so integral. And then we have, and then we have the square root. Now, remember that we claim that this expression right here, it's x squared plus 25. Okay, x squared plus 25, that's exactly the same expression as, the, as this one. And that's equal to 25 times secant squared data. And so we can actually just replace that whole expression by 25 secant squared data. And so we are going to be having, uh, yeah, so we put the 25 and then secant squared data. And then times the dx. <clears throat> what is the dx? We are actually figure that out, right? So we're going to put that right here. That's going to be 5 secant square data and then d data. So dx becomes this. And then whatever that's inside the square root becomes all that. Okay. So now let's simplify this expression right now. So we are going to be getting um, <clears throat> the 25 square root of 25 becomes a 5. Okay, so that's th just the 5. Now, this thing here, secant square data with the square root, is actually giving you the absolute value of secant data. And then times what? Times... Um, the five secant square data d data. Okay, now <clears throat> you may say, how do we deal with this absolute value? Let's just take a look at this. Um, we actually restrict restricted the uh, the the data right to be between like the power over two to power over two, and so what really happens is that that's just any angles between. Um, well, it's in quadrant one and quadrant four. So in this case, you know that secant is actually just the reciprocal of the cosine. So in this case, cosine is positive in quadrant one and quadrant 
4. So secant is also positive in quadrant 1 and quadrant 4. Okay, and so in this case, what happens? Then we can we actually do not really need the absolute value. We I mean, simply say that, okay, so absolute value of secant data is actually just equal to secant data because of the restriction of the data right here. And so putting the stuff together, we are actually getting in um, the 25. Okay, how do we get 25? 5 times 5, we get 25. And because that's a constant, so we put it outside the integral. Now the integral symbol, and then we have secant data times secant square. We are going to be getting secant cubed. So now we are getting this secant cube right here. <clears throat> okay, so you may say, what do we do with this thing? Um, I actually did another video on integrating the secant cube function here. So we are just going to take the result from there because it's going to be a lot more work. And to avoid uh, moving away from the big picture, I'm not going to show the work right here. If you're interested on how to find the antiderivative for secant cube, you can actually check out that video in the description. Okay, so I'm just going to write down the antiderivative for the secant cube data in the next step. Okay, so what we are getting, what we are getting is that we're getting the 25 and it's antiderivative. It's going to be one over two secant data, tangent data, plus one over two ln of secant data plus tangent data. Okay, inside the absolute value, and then uh, plus. Let's just call the constant of integration C1, okay? Now that's a lot of stuff, right? Because we actually need to do it by integration by parts. Okay, so um, from here, then what do we need to do next? Is that we can actually uh, rewrite this whole expression Right? We can rewrite this whole expression by switching back to um, the variable x by using this blue triangle right here. So we're going to do that. And so what we're going to do is that we got to start writing it here is that. Um, so first, I'm going to start distributing the 25 as well. OK, so 25 times 1 half is 25 over 2. Now times. Now the secant data, secant data is just based on this triangle, we can actually find an expression for x, which is actually the hypotenuse over the adjacent because the cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, right? So you take the radical divided by five. So we are going to put that right here. So we get 25 plus x squared. I should have put I should have just copied that expression, but it doesn't matter, right? You know that addition is cumulative. So we have what? We have over 5. Right, that one is for the secant. That one is for the secant. So I'm actually, I really should not use the same color right here. So let me just highlight it in a different color so that it's easier for us to tell. Then... <clears throat> Yeah, so we can just indicate that that's coming from the secant data right here, okay? And then next, next is the tangent, the tangent. Tangent comes from here, it's just x over 5. Tangent data is equal to x over 5, so we put that right here. So we get um, x over 5. Okay, continue. Now, don't forget to distribute the 25 to the 1 half, right? We are doing multiple steps at the same time. So 25 times the 1 half. So we are going to be getting 25 over, uh, what is that, 2? Okay. And then ln of, now, this secant data is actually just the same stuff. Okay, so we have the square root of 25 plus x square and then all over. Over what? All over the 5. And then plus. Now the tangent data is actually just the same stuff again, right? So we are going to be getting um, 
x over 5. <clears throat> and then plus 25c1. Okay, so um, see what's going on right here. We can actually start canceling stuff. There was a five here at the bottom. There was a five here at the bottom. That's together, that's 25, which can cancel with the 25 at the top. So we can cross out the 25 and the five and the five right here. Okay. Okay, so right now, um, continuing to simplify the answer. We're basically done, but if we are to simplify the answer, then we are going to be getting what? Um, we are going to be getting the x times the square root of 25 plus x squared. And then two. Yeah, so sometimes you also should learn how to simplify stuff too. So we have x and then the square root and then the two at the bottom. Okay, so that's our first turn. Second turn right here. Um, so we have 25 over two. There was the ln function in there. Um, we can actually, because they have the same denominator, we can actually put them as a single fraction right here, which now becomes 25 plus x squared and then plus x and then all over the 5, right? And then plus and then 25c1, okay? Now, you can use the log property because that's a quotient right here. So we can use the log property to break it up into the top my, uh, minus the bottom, right? So we can do that. So if we do that, then we are going to be getting what? Um, 25 over two is the coefficient, right? So it's still going to leave it. So we are going to be getting the absolute value of the square root of 25 plus x squared and then plus x, okay, minus the 25 over 2 ln of 5 and then plus the 25c1. So that's a lot of writing right there. Um, but do you see that all that stuff is really just constant right here? So what are we getting as the final answer? We are actually having, um, we're actually just having x times the square root of 25 plus x squared all over, all over the two, and then plus 25 over two, ln of absolute value of the square root of 25 plus x squared and then plus x, and then and then plus and just call c right so we can just just call the c and then just see that all the stuff right it's becoming this c right here Okay, so that's it for this problem. Um, we were actually just done at this step right here, but then if you want to make your answer look better or you try to do more work with this answer and you want to simplify it, then that's how you can do it, right? Three extra steps, but they're mostly just algebra steps right here. Okay, so that's it. If you like this video, please give me a like, subscribe to my channel and share my videos to others. It will give me support to make more videos. If you have questions or have a topic that you want me to talk about, please leave me a comment. Thank